2006 WNBA Finals on Sunday, the Monarchs took advantage of the home court and beat the shot by 20. Sacramento's veteran superstar Yolanda Griffith led her team to victory and a two games to one series lead. The Monarchs are one win away from capturing their second straight WNBA title. Can the shot stay alive and force a fifth and deciding game in Detroit? We'll fill you in as we get you set for tonight's Game 4 at Arco Arena, next on NBA TV. Well, here come the defending champs and those who want to be the champions now. That's right, as uh, Tisha Pinachero, the Sacramento Monarchs, and you saw Deanna Nolan of the Detroit Shock before them, arrive at Arco Arena as uh, Nicole Powell trying to bring her three game to the home arena. Sacramento Monarchs trying to close things out up two games to one in the WNBA Finals, and we are here to get you ready for game number four from Sacramento. Hello, everybody. Come on inside and welcome to our house. NBA TV's pregame coverage of game four of the WNBA Finals begins right now. I'm Andre Aldridge. Thrilled to be alongside Gail Marquis. Gail, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. Feeling better. We're back to basketball tonight. Indeed, you're right. As I mentioned, the Monarchs up two games to one. And, uh, Gail, I think you were playing the last time the Monarchs lost the game. <laughs> at home during the playoffs. <laughs> so uh, how tough is it going to be for the Shock to uh, climb this mountain and extend the series? It's still going to be tough, very tough, because they are 10-0 at home, 11-3 already for the playoffs, and they are not about to lose this game here tonight. It's going to be a tough one for them. All right. Well, again, ESPN2 is a place to be in, oh, just about a half an hour or so, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's right. Game number four in the capital of the Golden State. Monarchs look to win their second consecutive WNBA crown, and the Shock trying to keep hope alive and force a game five in Detroit. And you know what? As we sit here, we are very happy to be joined via the NBA TV uh, video phone from Arco Arena with the president of the WNBA, Donna Orinder. So Donna Andre Aldridge and uh, Gail Marquis there. Uh, Gail, tell Donna hello. And hello, Donna. Hi, Gail. How hey are there. you? Doing great. Doing great. <laughs> great. Great to have you back on the show and everything. How is it this 10th year anniversary, this 10th year season for you? How's it going for you so far? Uh, so far, it's been a great season, and I'll tell you, if you get a sense through your live cameras what's going on in the arena, it's everything that the WNBA promises it can be. There's so much excitement, so many fans, lots of passion, lots of excitement. Uh, you know, I wish the season could go on for a couple more months, but we're really, I know I'm personally ready for another great matchup tonight. It's going to be another great, great sense of basketball, another great matchup. You're absolutely right. And this year has been uh, just one of setting different types of records, milestones. You had Elisa Leslie with her 5,000 points. You have a 10-year anniversary of a league that some people said it wouldn't even work. You had an all-decade team. Uh, just, just what about this league this year, this 10th year? What makes it so very special? I think the fact that, you know, this league is not only still standing, but it's flourishing. And I think that took a lot of people, certainly from the outset, who said this league wouldn't make it. I think it says, listen, we've got a lot to offer um, a lot of people. And so when you look at certainly the style of play this year, very much up-tempo. Every single team averaged higher than they did last year. I think every team at a minimum scored uh, eight points per game. We broke all kinds of scoring records in addition to milestones for Lisa Leslie. We had 4,000 points for Cheryl Swoops, for Tina Thompson. Um, I, I, we've got unbelievable rookies, the Fab Four. I, there's a lot uh, to celebrate this year, and I think there's a lot for all of us who are fans of the WNBA and who are becoming fans of the WNBA to look ahead. Hey, Donna, as we get to this uh, final series, and, you know, after game one, uh, Sacramento so thorough in taking care of their business, and then the Detroit Shock really uh, come back and, and show what they're made of. But uh, you sitting as the president, when you read an article or see that Joe Dumars, uh, the president of the Pistons, says his favorite player in the WNBA is Yolanda Griffith, just on the strength of what he saw in game one. I mean, how does that hit you? I'll tell you, I actually spent some time with Joe when I was at the uh, the Palace. And, you know, to have a man of his stature, such a great player himself, profess such admiration for all of our players, but particularly to be taken by Yo, I think it really speaks to the quality of play, the char charismatic appeal of our players. And I think getting Joe's opinion out there a lot more to let people know what a great brand of basketball we have is important. It's important for this, the ongoing success of the league. 
And I think now, Donna, we're going to take it to another level as we're preparing just after the playoffs, we, after the finals, we go right into Team USA basketball. And although some people like Lisa Leslie maybe had to step back, Yolanda Griffith said she wanted to take a rest, I look at her replacements. Cheryl Ford, who's replacing her, Michelle Snow. I'm really impressed with the Tennessee star, uh, Candace Parker. How about this next crop? You mentioned the Fab Four as well. How about this next crop of basketball players coming into the league now? I'll tell you, I, I think that this year was so interesting because you had, we had such a great rookie class, right? And uh, they just came out and gave notice that they were going to make a difference right off the bat. Cappy Pondexter, Simone Augustus, right? Candace, right, right, um, right. yeah, Can Candace Dupree, Sophia Young. I mean, I, it's just unbelievable. And yet, the veterans have proved they've got real staying power. So when Lisa Leslie steps up and wins MVP, Looking ahead, I will tell you that the level of talent, and I think the WNBA and its presence has had a real impact on the quality of athletes and the commitment of these athletes. When we look at the NCAA and see their commitment at the collegiate level to women's basketball, mm -hmm. I, I just think that our future in terms of the quality of play, the level of entertainment, uh, the level of athletes looking forward is something that gives us all a lot of confidence. Hey, Donna, there's so much success for the women in, in the World Championship and on the international stage. So how do you make sure that these ladies don't put too much pressure on themselves in trying to do more than has happened in the past? I I'll tell you what. I don't think that our women get enough credit for the fact that they have won mm -hmm. three gold medals, Olympic gold medals. They've won all the past world championships. Mm -hmm. They are pros to a T. They have a tremendous chemistry. They all play international, so they have a great feel for the style of play. Um, I think that they are icons of the game, not only in America, but globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, I've spoken to many of them, that they are ready to play for Coach Ann Donovan and Mike Tebow. Well, oh, and of course, <laughs> our newest coach. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. <laughs> Dawn, Dawn Staley. Staley, of course. Uh -huh. Dawn Staley, of course. And listen, what's on the forefront? What is in the vision? You've really put this whole strategy of the WNBA as a package going forward. We made changes to the shot clock, 24-second shot clock, more possessions. What's on the forefront? They're talking about going to non-NBA cities with WNBA teams and, and different formats. So if you could speak to what, what remains in your vision for this league one year out, five years out, ten years out. Uh, you know, that's a big question, and I don't, think we, I don't think I have all the answers nor time for tonight, but let me just say this. We're excited about expansion. We have many cities who have um, certainly picked up the phone and given us a call and said, what do we have to do to be a WNBA city? We're excited about that. Um, we think looking forward that a lot of those cities um, bring to us ownership groups that will be focused on our business, that really love the women's game and really see it as a real tremendous asset for their community um, and for what they say to their city about their belief in women and families. So going forward, we look forward to growing um, the teams uh, that, that are in the WNBA. And of course, we look forward to the great young talent that we see coming out of college and the ability for our players to um, probably have more platforms to be able to speak to their fans through all do sor different sorts of medium because I think we have really charismatic athletes and I think it's our job to help them connect in a much wider, uh, in, in much wider opportunities to the fan base. All right. Well, Donna, we certainly appreciate you joining us and spend some time with us here and uh, we look forward to talking to you on down later in the series. Andre, Gail, thank you so much, everybody. Be a great game tonight. Looking forward to it. All Thank you. Right. Thanks, Donna. And, and of course, I mean that, you know, if the series is over, we still are going to talk to Donna because that's that's just how we roll. But more <laughs> into uh, game number four and what's about to take place there because uh, we've got a crew out there that's putting in some serious, serious work. And uh, our good friend Rick Kamla is uh, standing by on the uh, at Arco Arena along with Krista Blunk. So let's head back out to the Golden State and get their thoughts on what's about to transpire. All right, thanks a lot, Andre. Krista, you have the Sacramento Monarchs looking to go back-to-back. -back. It would be the third time in WNBA history that the team has won back-to-back -back titles. And for them, it's a case of deja vu, but with a different opponent. That's right. Last year it was Connecticut, but the same scenario. They went away, had to play two games, won the first one, lost the second one, came back home, won that third, and now hoping to finish it off. Nobody wants to pack those bags and have to go back to Detroit. They saw what the crowd was like in game two. They know what it would be like to have to go there and play a game five. They don't want that situation. Now for Detroit, it really is a situation where it's quote unquote team turmoil, uh, a lot of bickering both within the team and with the officials and on and on and on. And you wonder, 
Can this team that rebounded after the game one blowout rebound off the game three blowout? They absolutely can. There's no doubt about it. They have different forms of motivation, but it definitely works. Whether it's coach making comments about his own individual players or about the officiating, whatever it might be, they have found a way to motivate themselves to step up in those big games when they have to. This is a must win for them. I'm expecting a much different look from Detroit here tonight than we saw the other day. Well, they better bring it. They did not bring it in game three, and they got thumped. They have lost the last three meetings against the Sacramento Monarchs here at Arco Arena by 30 plus points on the average. That is an unbelievable statistic. So for Krista, I'm Rick. Now let's send it back to Andre in our Secaucus studio. All right, Rick, Krista, thank you both very much. So, Gail, what, what about that number? Does that number mean anything going into this game? Uh, I would like to say it doesn't mean anything, <laughs> but uh, after three times, this has <laughs> got to be in the back of your head. And I'm not sure if the coach, Coach Lambeer, is helping them to dispel that number, but it's an important number. Let's see if they can get past it today. All right. Hey, we need to take a quick time out. When we uh, return, well, we'll give you a unique look at the WNBA's finals from a different point. That's right. Little sound and a little picture that you don't normally get. Keep it right here. The 2006 Women's FIBA World Championship in Brazil gets underway on Tuesday, September 12th, and concludes on September 23rd. The USA Women's World Championship team was finalized today with the addition of Detroit Cheryl Ford, Michelle Snow of the Houston Comets, and the 2006 SEC Rookie of the Year, Candace Parker of Tennessee. It was also officially announced that WNBA MVP Lisa Leslie of the Los Angeles Sparks has withdrawn from the United States team due to personal reasons. You can see the United States take on China in their opening round matchup on Tuesday night right here on NBA TV. Coverage begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, imagine being on the court for a WNBA Finals game. Well, you don't have to wonder what it's like anymore. Throughout the Monarch Shock series, our crews have mic'd up some players and coaches, so we now listen to the sounds of the season. It's game two for the Palace of Auburn Hills, the Sacramento Monarchs, and the Detroit Shock. Looking forward to tonight to get back out there, kind of redeem ourselves, let's hope. They look at it, if they lose here at home, going to Sacramento down two, they see that as a deep hole. If they've got any heart, which, and I don't think it'd be here if they didn't have heart, they're going to come right at you. Tonight, this is 40 minutes of everything you have. You've got to get one before you get two, before you get three. Go take care of business, have some fun tonight, and get number one. Shot on three. One, two, three. Outside for Demile Walker. Outside, Kristen Haney strokes a 15-footer and nails it. 
16-12. Sacramento cash at the other end. Yes, and one. We gotta help. We gotta help. We gotta get back. Ball, ball, ball. Shot. Shot. Side Penetero left alone for three. She'll take it but miss it. And a rebound to Swift Cash. Took it right away from Demaya Walker. Springs up the left sideline. To the middle of the floor for Planet Pearson who lays it up and in. And will even up the WNBA Finals and a win apiece. Three, one, two, three. Our heart was severely tested today. We hung in there, all right, and we're going to take them, and we're going to shut them down, and we're going to outscore them, and we're going to win this series. you got to take care of the next game. Let's go. The bottom line, we figured it out. Our ball club figured out how hard they have to play. we got a series on our hands. Now our task is we have to win one of two games in their building. On to game three. Arco Arena in Sacramento, California. Game three of this best of five WNBA Finals. I expect nothing less <laughs> than a probably all-out war. <laughs> We've got to guard Nolan. We've got to guard Cash. I mean, they're good. We're at home. We slept in our own beds last night. We're ready to go. We're coming here and taking this game because it's our game, OK? Wear them down throughout the course of the game. So the whole series, they keep wearing them down. You're bigger, faster, stronger. Go take this game today. Let's go. Far left, Powell laps to Walker, low left on Riley. Squares and then comes right around her, lays it up and in, and the foul. A three-point play chance for Demaya Walker and Sacramento with a great start to this game. Play through it. Play through it. You knew they're going to come out like this, right? Play through it. Nice feet ahead. Push her to the basket with a left hand. Good and a foul. Let's go. You're the Eastern Conference champions. Represent it like you're supposed to. Busher has to heave ho, and she gets it away and drills a three. It's all Monarchs here. The fans love it. One away from our goal when the season started. We've got them on our court. We kicked them tonight. We kicked them one other game, but they also beat us one. I didn't think we were ready to play as hard as we had to to win a game in their building. Now, we're going to come and we're going to hoop. And we're going to put forth the energy, the effort, the determination, and the physical play necessary to win a basketball game. Will we win it? I think so. But we're going to give it our best shot. All right, the sights and sounds. Now we present the hard numbers to back up the 2-1 lead for the Sacramento Monarchs. And, uh, well, big numbers there all around offensively. If you had to pick out one player, too, maybe y y Yolanda Griffin doesn't have all the points, but it really starts with her on Sacramento's side of things, doesn't it? It starts with her not only on the points, but uh, on that leadership. We saw on the tapes how she is in that huddle. Coach Wisnett says what he has to say, but, hey, it comes back to Yo Griffith. We've seen her on uh, some of the half times. Uh, mm -hmm. Sacramento was leading. We <laughs> speak to her. She's coming off the court, and they got a 10-point lead. Not Listen, happy. Not happy. We're not <laughs> rebounding. We're not boxing out. We're not executing. We're not. We're not. We're not. So it starts there, and her players react. Her teammates react to her. So uh, this is the champion. They want to get on her back. Mm -hmm. Check those numbers. She's playing better than the, than the regular season. She's pumped up her numbers. That's who you want to roll with. This on bad knees, too. But again, you can't stop her from uh, willing her team to victory. Right now, we want to head back out to Arco Arena and hear from both head coaches. Rick Canla standing by with the Shocks head man. Thanks a lot, Andre. Here with Bill Lambeer. Now, Bill, your, your team is facing elimination. What do you expect from them here in game four? No, I expect our best effort. Uh, you know, we've come out a couple games and haven't given our best effort for whatever reasons. Uh, this one, I think we're pretty focused. We spent two days on the mental part of the game, and I expect them to come out and play with energy and efficiency. All right, and, you know, you think of game one, blowout loss. Game two, your team bounced back. Game three, blowout loss. And of course, you're looking for a bounce back here in game four. How do you and your team get that done? It's just effort. It's just focus and concentration. Uh, the X's and O's, you know, those will take care of themselves. Uh, we got to stop our turnovers is one thing. But other than that, it's all effort, it's all heart, it's all emotion, and how bad you want it. Understood. Bill, good luck in game four. Thank you very much. All right, Bill Lambeer. Now let's send it over to Krista. She's standing by with John Wisnick. All right, thanks, Rick. Joining me, John Wisnett of the Sacramento Monarchs. Coach, a uh, similar situation from last season, but a different team out here. Are you trying to keep that out of your players' minds and out of your minds, not think about what happened last year and just focus on what's at hand right now? Uh, 
we we want to happen what happened last year. We want to win. Uh, we don't want to go back to Detroit. But yet we know that we've got to play the game. And uh, we just have to remember back to the last quarter at Detroit in the second game or our regular season game at Detroit to remember how dangerous they are. And so uh, we, we just have to be prepared to play our best. Tell us some of the emotions that uh, have been going through practice times and just a couple of days in between since the last game. How are you guys feeling as a team and, and you individually? Well, uh, you know, I'm ready to get it over with. I, I, want, uh, I don't want to go back to Detroit. I, what we've, we've tried to have good practices. We've uh, tried to think of all the things that Detroit might throw new at us so we could prepare for them. Uh, we've had good practices. Our players have been alert. It'll just come down, can we execute that game plan tonight in, uh, against Detroit? All right, Coach. Well, good luck to you guys. Try to enjoy it out there. Andre, I'll send it back to you, and Sacramento hoping to keep it right here and finish things off. All right, Krista, thank you very much. Gail and I need to take a quick time out. We're coming back with much more in just a minute as we're getting you ready for game four of the 2006 WNBA Finals. We'll hear from some of the players as they're preparing for tonight's matchup at Arco Arena. Keep it right here. I guess I was worried about how it affected. Welcome back. The 2006 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame induction ceremony takes place Friday night in Springfield, Massachusetts. Coverage of the event gets underway at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV with our red carpet preview show. Then at 7.30 Eastern, NBA TV and ESPN Classic will simulcast the induction ceremony. It's a Hall of Fame night Friday on NBA TV and ESPN Classic. And we welcome you back to our pregame coverage of Game 4 of the WNBA Finals. Andre Aldridge and Gail Marquis with you. Things about to tip off at Arco Arena shortly. Do the Detroit Shock believe they can win this game, Gail, in your thoughts? Most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. you got to go in there believing. And they can. I mean, I think all they have to they only have to look back to Game 2. It was not that long ago that they were able to revert a 10-point halftime deficit, mm -hmm. turn it around. They scored 40 points in that second half, able to grab 18 rebounds in that second half. Just think of what you did. And part of it, as the coach said, was excellent execution and limiting their turnovers. That's where it's going to be. All right. Let's get some more player thoughts and ideas. And for that, we head back out to Krista Blunk, who's standing by with Tisha Pinachero. All right. Thanks, Andre. I'm joined with Tisha Pinachero now with the Sacramento Monarchs. Tisha, a similar scenario from last season, just a different team that you guys are going to face. Have you been trying to not think about that and not, not relate the two things? What, where's the focus right now? 
Well, the focus is to, to get another game, and that's today. I mean, we, we have a great opportunity to finish up in our own floor in front of our fans. Uh, like you said, we did it last year, and it was a great feeling. So uh, we just want to do it all over again. But we know it's going to take a lot of effort and uh, just focus. Uh, this team is not easy. They're not going to go away that easy. They're great competitors, and we expect that they'll fight out there today. You've had a couple of days in between. Is that a good thing for you? Were you guys able to get a little bit of extra rest and some extra practice time? Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, sometimes you just want to get things going. And, you know, I wish sometimes we would have played yesterday. But we take the extra rest and, you know, we have more time to prepare, watch film, uh, and get your mind right for today. So, um, you know, that's how the, the schedule is done. And uh, we're ready today. And uh, I think it will be a great game. And hopefully we'll win again. All right, Tisha, good luck to you guys. I try to have a little fun out there. All right, Andre, that is Tisha Pinachero. And they are just ready to get this game going. All right, thank you very much, Chris. As we take a quick look at Tisha's numbers for the playoffs and the finals. And, of course, when her game isn't on the A side, the Monarchs have uh, Kristen Haney to come in, who's the Michigan girl on that squad. So that's been a great one-two punch for them. Let's get the Detroit side of things as Rick Kamla standing by with the player. Thanks a lot, Andre, here with Ruth Riley. Now, Ruth, obviously you're facing elimination. The season is on the line. The daunting stat is the fact that your Detroit Shock have lost by 31 points per game in the last three matchups here at Arco. How do you overcome this unbelievable home court advantage? Well, uh, the streak's got to end sometimes. So, you know, we just got to come out, be aggressive, and I mean, what better game than game five and, or game four in the WBA Finals? Now, the body language uh, on your team just doesn't appear to be to be good at all. There, there's some bickering uh, both with the team and, and with the officials. And how do you turn that around here in this hostile environment with everything seemingly against you in this pivotal, huge game four? Well, I think that we're refocused. Obviously, a lot of things fall apart for us um, here in the last game. But, you know, I think we got our attitudes right. We got to come in here and stay together because, you know, the only ones for us right now are, are the people wearing the Detroit Shocks uniform. So. I think that it's going to be a great matchup. All right, Ruth, good luck here in game four. Thanks. Ruth. All right, Ruth Riley, Andre, back to you. Thank you very much there, Rick. Game's coming up on ESPN2. Just a couple of minutes, that's right. Monarchs and the shot game for, for a minute there. I thought uh, Ruth was going to tell, you know what, now that you tell me all that, I'm not going to play. <laughs> no, we didn't think we were going to no, do that. No, Ruth so, will be there. So, Gail Marquis, as we sit here, you've already said Detroit believes they can win this ball game. Uh, all right, put on your crystal ball. Who is going to win game four? I believe that Detroit believes that they can win it. Mm -hmm. They have the great opportunity. They have the players. They have the focus. It's up to them to pull it out. I do see it in Sacramento and Aqua Arena. Tough job ahead. I see Sacramento just walking off with the crown okay. today. Uh, no today. trips back to the Motown Airport, to no. the Motown shop. I like Detroit, stuff. but we're not going back All right, there. great job <laughs> by you. That's it for myself and Gail. We'll see you back here on our NBA TV post-game show. So uh, get over to ESPN2, watch the ball game, and then come back afterwards, and Gail and I will break it all down, and we'll hear from the coaches and players. Thanks for joining us. It's finals time right here.